folks. What's going on? Appreciate everybody tuning in, watching us on YouTube. If you hadn't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe to it. Click the bell for notifications. So that way you can be notified whenever we upload our videos for our season this year. So I had a, a comment that come across um, that I really haven't went in that much detail just for the simplicity of the Elko EP20 that we run. Uh, some folks had a question about wanting to see how I, I set it up, you know, the the heights and running it and everything like that in and out. So dive through and show you a little bit about it. The Elko EP20 is very simple. Right out of the box, whenever you order it, it comes with uh, the clamp style transom uh, mount. So it's literally these little brackets that just tighten down onto your transom. So once you tighten it down, like I said, a uh, previous video that we done from hitch to transom, decided to go with the remote steer. So I've got the remote steer cable here that I had ordered online that connects in through to it. And one of the things that, that a lot of people have, have talked about is making sure to keep the remote steer linkage, this, this basically this bar that allows the wheel to turn left and right, keeping it properly cleaned, greased, so that way it has good free motion and it doesn't grind against things and stuff like that. So I try to make sure every couple, you know, two, three months or something, clean it, re-grease it again so that way it don't get any, especially when towing, when it's raining and stuff, it, it winds up getting some debris particles on it. So the Elko EP20 is very, very simple. It also comes with a wiring harness. That's that's really the most challenging part to the whole setup was, you know, getting the right cables, connections from your batteries to your motor. Um, it takes a special tool, the crimper. Basically, it's the one that's got the, the little anvil style into it that you hammer down into the fittings for the, the wiring harness. A real quick easy simple method with these little brackets that's in here and all it is once you get it put together wired together you just plug it in and you've got a real good secure electrical components that way it doesn't get any cross connection so dive through and i'll show you on the tilt and trim so right here is how you go about tilting and trim manual on your electric outboard. It's very, very quick, easy. Um, you can deploy it real, real fast. But it's a real quick, simple release mechanism. So one of the most important things with electric outboards is much weight. Uh, the EP20 weighs right at 100 pounds. One of the things you really want to make sure to do is um, not utilizing just your brackets as far as towing because what you'll wind up doing is is getting some some weakness even more into your transom which you can tell this boat that when i got it the transom was already weak so we had to install a a plate to try to help sturdy it up and it's significantly helped so one of the first things you'll do is unstrap for your transom saver I always use had a strap on here one time my partner actually wound up hitting a, uh, a four by four going down the interstate and broke my ratchet that that was strapped down for the, the motor toter but uh, thankfully it didn't really do any damages to my partner's truck or anything or really to the trailer so uh, got a bungee strap that's on it right now <clears throat> So what you want to do is lift up your motor, drops your transom saver, pull your clip out, then here it gets back into the bracket, so that way you can take and release it to be able to take it. All you have to do is tilt your motor up till it clicks, and then it'll drop all the way down to the lowest setting. Uh, obviously, you want to be careful running it. 
uh, driving it up and down the road. Before you put it in at the boat ramp, you'll wind up dragging it if you ain't careful, depending on how your, your boat height setup is. So what I always like to do is, uh, once I get it down, before I put it in the water, got what I always like to do is flip your switch back up, so that way you can tilt it out. Whenever you're taking and putting in, you want to make sure you got enough ground clearance. So always click it up. There's one click and two clicks. Once you get in the water, it's as simple as coming back here to the back, flip the switch down, left from your top, and it'll go back down to the normal setting. It's that way when you operate it. There's a settings that you can have for, you, you can manually adjust how far you want the electric outboard to be tilted up. So I've got it set out and it comes with four different adjustments that you can manually tilt out. Uh, the idea behind that is you wanna try to get the motor while you're in the water as leveled as you can in the water. So, but you can manually take this pin directly out and adjust it to any setting and I'll kind of show you what it looks like being a little bit different. So like I said again, flip your switch, lift up and it goes all the way down. And you can tell just from looking at it that it definitely sits in a lot tighter to the transom, so. Let's kick this back out. Again, flip your switch. For your manual adjustment. Until it clicks. Then you can take this pin back out again. Like I said, always mind setting best in the water at the furthest extension out. So again, flip your switch and then it'll click and it'll go back down and lock into the position. Now, one of the things that I like to do with it in lock, you can see that it will not kick out. When I'm running, I always like to do this as a safety, flip that switch back up. So that way, if you're going down the lake, you wind up hitting a rock or a stump or some boulders or something, that motor will be free to kick out and it won't take and, you know, cause the motor's gonna be pushing. So at least if you hit something, it'll, it'll kick itself out. So. so once you get your Elko electric outboard, uh, one of the first things that you do uh, after the, the initial break-in period, um, I believe it was uh, 10 hours, I believe it was, or eight hours or something like that. Refer to your manual on it because I don't have my manual right here, right here with me, but um, is to change the lower foot oil. It's very quick, very easy to do. Um, you've got your upper fill port, and then you've got down here at the bottom of the actual head itself, you've got your bottom screw that you drain uh, the actual um, fluids out of it. So <clears throat> already took and broke mine in uh, back in the initial part of the year and already refilled it back up uh, and following the schedule for it for changing out the, the fluids on it periodically uh, to keep this lower head unit in good shape. But uh, very quick, very easy. Just make sure that the gasket o-rings fit in there and seal just right whenever you put them back in don't cross the at them just make sure it goes in the right direction all right one other thing i'd highly recommend everybody do um with looking at the the prop for the elco motors uh, you see you've got your um castle nut and your car key so make sure pick up some spare car keys because you're going to wind up running into a situation where you get out there on the water and this car key breaks shears make sure you get you another castle nut uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to pick up an extra prop just that way you've got one just in case 
Um, you never know whenever that winds up happening, you're going to be stuck out there in the water. Folks, here we go. Time to go get on the water. Some of y'all been asking about wanting to see uh, the Elko EP20 on how it operates. A little bit more detail as far as maybe sit down and, and show you from from key switch to throttle and that way you can see exactly how I operate the EP20. Now you get online, you don't you don't see a whole lot of you know discussions about best ways to take and operate for conserving batteries and, and stuff like that. So um, we're gonna get out here, gonna go to one of our local lakes around here and uh, break it down and show you how this thing runs. But I'm going to do some fishing though, hopefully to catch some fish and be able to show you too. So just hang tight. Here we go. a jack plate on it set to where you can take a manually uh, tilt and trim it uh, but Elko's got it to where it comes with uh, a lever uh, that you can take and manually uh, lock it click it and then you'll be able to take and tilt it up and then it goes all the way down to the lowest setting I always like I've got mine uh, kicked out um, just one click up and that's in, that tends to get it to the fastest speed. So um, it's a remote steer. Uh, that cable assembly that goes all the way up to um, the side console that, that connects into my rack. So with this, we're running a 48 volt system. Let me show you right here. So we've got four batteries running series that makes a 48 volt system so uh, then i've got one battery that that runs nothing but the utilities so let's crank this thing up take it for a spin uh you can see over here i've got you can hear the clicking whenever the motor starts registering um key ignition uh that goes on um comes with a Lavorsi, I believe it is um, throttle body so I've also got uh, the voltmeter here I don't know whether or not you can actually see it I'm sitting at 50 volts and I tend to on a, on a full charge I can get about 53 volts so 53 volts is, is pretty um, standard for what a full charge um, on, on this system is so um, it's very quick very simple let's get it driving oh I almost forgot so with running the electric outboard I tend to like to pull my front trailer motor up it really don't make that big of a difference um, with the trailer motor down or up um, as far as speeds go, you tend to get uh, best speeds uh, with the motor uh, up. So, 
Let's get this thing going. Key ignition on. Throttle body forward. And as you can see, some water cools. So it's got water that, that sprays out of it. So we'll go ahead and full throttle it. So with, with running um, the Elko EP20 on this, you can see from our speeds, just by myself, just by myself I'm getting about 6263. And the amazing part, here's the amazing part, and walk up front, and that's, that's the key with electric cowboys. So running an electric outboard, your key is to get all your weight shifted up to the front as much as possible. So I'm going to kick this thing back so that way I don't run out of juice coming back up. So one of the biggest challenges in electric outboards is you've got to conserve your battery. Um, average on this thing, I always like to, to run it about half throttle because um, if you wind up full throttling three miles four miles uh, i've already ran down lake down here so running back up lake it'd be the you know we'd probably only be running three mile an hour going back up so, um by the time we got to the ramp but you've got to take and reserve that that battery towards you get that great initial run time right off the bat that gets you there ahead of everybody else because everybody else running just trolling motors only is getting you know right at five six maybe um the guys that's got them tweaked just right so we're gonna go back at it and catch a little bit more fish before it get finishes up and gets dark so Thank you. 